Damn it. Roll sound, roll camera. We're coming to you live. We're starting beef with Shane Dawson. You heard it here first, folks. Well, yeah, I'm pissed. Why are you pissed? Well, because you just told me that you had sent Shane a message and he exclamation pointed it with no, well, no other context. Blown, that's a full blown blow off. And when I did that the other night, I was responding to his mom and I was just going to do a heart and leave it at that. Yeah. And he goes, that is crazy. Like, no, that it is, is. That is like insane behavior. Like only awful people only do the. Bo- no, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's insanely dismissive. Well, this is crazy because he literally got mad at me for doing that. And then so he did knows. It to the, you. Yeah. So he knows the power. He knows the weight behind the action. And while we're mad at Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Don't if you want to come for me, you better do it off air, bitch. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I, I, I'm being set up. No, I'm still on my Shane rage. You're okay, coming next. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm still on my Shane rage. Yeah, keep going with your Shane rage. I'm literally being set up to, uh, like, he's setting me up. Go on. Well, every morning I wake up and I'm always, like, you know, cleaning the kitchen, picking up after the night. And whatever that man has left out for me to pick up, the lid is never screwed. Oh, could be anything. <gasps> Joe does the same fucking could thing. And salsa. you pick it up from the lid and it just drops and it's fucking everywhere. Yes. Joe does that shit and he acts like he doesn't and it's fucking wild. He'll <laughs> yeah. do it with pill bottles. I'll be like, bro, just put the pill bottle on the top because I pick it up from the... I, I pick it up. And you wouldn't think that there's... And that. I did that there's a psychopath in my house who's just not <laughs> screwing shit in. And I confronted him about it and he was like, no, I don't oh, do yeah, that. Oh yeah, they gaslight. And I was like... Oh. They gaslight because like, they I'm, can't be the ones not screwing it in. You're going to lose your privilege of me picking up the kitchen because I'm going to leave it for you to do it to yourself because it's so infuriating. And you wouldn't think that there's that many scenarios in which there could be something with a lid unscrewed, but... Like, there's a lot. You've never lived in our house if you don't know. Um, I have plans for retribution. What? <laughs> my friend Shannon does this really fucked up thing where when her fiance does something wrong or that she doesn't like, she will lightly unplug his like shit while it's charging. Oh. So it looks like it's still plugged in. But when he goes to find it the next day, there's no charge. Hmm. And he doesn't think to plug it back in because you just leave it lightly sitting in the socket. So if you lightly sit in the socket, his cell phone charger <laughs> and his like laptop charger and anything else that he needs charged, he will learn a fucking lesson. So here's what you need to do, ladies. You need to unplug his shit. If he's not screwing lids on, you need to unplug his shit. But that further makes my life a nightmare. What if I need to contact him and his phone's dead? It's cute that you think you ever leave your own house. (laughs) What if you need to walk across the house to contact him? Most of the time, he's the one that's ordering me food. So I will give him that, you know, like I'll I pick up the sprinkles that fly all over the kitchen. But he does sprinkle catastrophe. He does keep. Yes. Damn, that's a nightmare. You know, you have Halo Top, you add a little bit of sprinkles. And that's what I'm saying. He really has something out for me. And when I confront him, he acts like nothing had ever happened. And he doesn't do this. And he hasn't been doing it for the six years we've been dating. (sighs) I love you, Shane. Yeah, I love you too, Shane. But like, explain what's happening in Denver and screw the fucking lids on. Here's the deal. Are you also an ice cream and sprinkles girly? Well, not normally, but on an occasion because Shane is a sprinkles boy like he loves sprinkles but I really only will add them on top if they're the really soft ones the crunchy ones not Uh, yeah I'm not a huge fan but I also have started having my ice cream exclusively with whipped cream and rainbow sprinkles (laughs) so yesterday was Easter for us at least (laughs) he's exhausted (laughs) I'm exhausted I did all the cooking and you know what Lizzie is always on me about like, oh, you should cook more. You should do more things around the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one time I like muster up the courage to cook, I send Lizzie a photo like so proud. Like I had cut this butternut squash like you wouldn't believe. Like Mm -hmm. I am Gordon Ramsay. And I sent her a picture. Because all Gordon Ramsay does is (laughs) chop a squash. Hey, you know what? He sends me this picture and it's like literally just chopped squash. No, <laughs> behind sheet. was chicken and hamburgers that I also barbecued. And we did cut. you season them? Uh, no. Yeah, so like <laughs> you're not. That's this was my point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're you're serving a seasonless grilled chicken. It was delicious. Did you put salt on it? I don't like. I hate garlic more than anything. Mm-hmm. So stay away from me with that. Right, but garlic's not the only seasoning. I did season my butternut squash. What'd you put on it? Olive oil. Love that. Uh, pepper. Mm-hmm. Uh, salt. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. <laughs> But she was like, he's well, Gordon Ramsay now, guys. Watch out. No, but I mean, like, I I put in the effort yeah. and I thought if anyone would be proud, it would be Lizzie. And all I get back is like, hmm, I don't know. I can't taste it. So. And I was like, well, the reason why I said that is because I just saw some chopped squash on a baking sheet. And to me, 
<laughs> well, yes, it is difficult to chop a squash because I have tried, and those are some hard motherfuckers. I started screaming at everyone. I was like, I don't know if this is right. Like, I don't know if this is right. <laughs> no, and they're she, per- they're really hard. They're and, like, and that's why I thought I was like, yeah. is it like an avocado where it's too ripe and I like it's not going to be good? Yeah. And Shane goes, I don't know. Don't ask me. And then every all the all the other women in the house, they were like, No, it's fine. You're no, fine. Squashes are like hard as fuck unless it's like summer squash. That's what I'm saying. It was a big job to cut yeah. that squash, and I got compliments on how there was no skin showing. Like it was. All Did anybody just eat it? Squash. Everyone ate it. Do you like squash? I love squash. Oh, I think squash is so yucky. Really? Oh, so yeah. that so that's your true. That's the other that part. It digs yeah. deeper for you. I think squash kind of has like the aftertaste <laughs> of like a bathroom. Mm. Like it's mm. like a potty. What did you guys do for Easter? What didn't we do for Easter? That's the question. No, we just I see you're still in your Easter outfit. Yeah, this is the we're out of clothes look. <laughs> Um, and I don't think we're going to be getting new clothes. It feels like it's serving Easter church Sunday. To yeah. Me. Like literally when I was leaving the house, I was like, it's serving modern housewife. It's serving like mm, it's serving Mormon librarian meeting <laughs> your, your boyfriend's parents at church it's on church Easter vibes for, for the first sure, time. But it's also a little risque because you can see my bra on my skin. Right. Mm-hmm, I see that. Um, did you cook for the men in your life? I did. I made breakfast. I made a hash brown casserole. I made some eggs. I made some rolls <laughs> with cheese in them. Yeah. I made some sausage. I made some bacon. I made some fruit salad. I made some lemon bars. I hard boiled a bunch of white eggs so that we could dye them and make them glittery. Uh, we did that too. I broke every egg, so we didn't do it. Wow. My hard boiled eggs were perfect. Teresa, Shane's mom, was the one that helped me, guided me through it. Because last time I tried to make hard boiled eggs, that didn't work either. Why didn't it work? I, I thought you brought it to a boil and then you turned off the burner. Oh, so you made a soft boiled egg? Yes, they were all mm, mm, like Runny. not edible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then I tried putting it back in the pool. It was a whole fiasco. But you so know go what? Go ahead and hit that yellow button for your summer squash. Mm, oh. You're a chef girl. Raylan Adams. Gordon Ramsay, look out, bitch. And then Chris. Oh, Chris, you don't have your headset on. Um, what? Sorry. As he gets prepared. Sorry. He's back, ladies. Hello. Oh my gosh, his mic's not plugged in. <laughs> the world didn't want any of you, Chris. Uh, I, I'm worried if you plug that in right don't now. Don't you dare. Don't I'm worried you dare. it's going to mess up the recording. Don't you dare. Here. We'll talk to you in the second half. I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> when we break down and reset up, we'll check in. I unplugged his mic last week. I was like, he's not here. His mic is gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you oh, get. No, no mic. It, this is your punishment, Chris. Well, we probably just never plugged it in from the week before. <laughs> Whatever, Lizzie. No, it's I like punishment. it. I like it. We're aggressive. So Lizzie and I have been going back and forth on having FOMO and not FOMO from Coachella. Like literally. I, don't, I lost my FOMO. I no longer give a fuck. Oh, oh now you just want to go? No, now I don't give a fuck about so it. So you ha- you found your FOMO. Oh, no. I, oh. Lo- I got rid of my FOMO. Okay. I have no more fear of missing out. It seems awful i do kind of want to go camping though well judging by our text thread throughout the weekend you couldn't tell if like we were the most jealous angry people in the world that we weren't at coachella and then two seconds later we were like oh my gosh coachella's trash we could never go there (laughs) yeah i think i landed on coachella's trash and i could never go there (laughs) like i'm trying to think of like all the things like i'm not made for and one of the things is like the sun and a massive binge drinking environment like oh. that is not for this girly not and for this church girly the nightmare for me is that like everyone spends 20 hours getting ready 20 hours taking photos well, see, 20 that, hours right. editing their photos but that's not we're not those kind of girls like we're not i don't think you and i would go in any sort of like f- fashion fashion you know what i mean like, absolutely not i, I mean, kind of like died when i realized that Every pedestrian person there spent like five hundred to two thousand dollars on a look that's like a shitty jean skirt with a bathing suit top or right. like some weird doily wrapped around their nipples. And I'm just like, girl, that is not the move. Ask like ass cheeks out, like please no. Like put your ass cheeks back. Like what the fuck is this? What is this culture? Reg- anyways, and then you see the Haley Bieber's coming in in their fucking jeans and their regular t-shirts and I'm just like see that's the girl I am like I'm not trying to put well, on some weird and fucking... that's what I've been telling you all along with fashion like the realtors in LA also will always be like oh it's always the people that are dressed like they've just rolled out of bed that are the ones that are actually yeah. like buying the house yeah. and so I just feel like with fashion it's like do whatever you're comfortable in exactly but it sounds like my nightmare well to- that's what I was trying to explain to you on your vlog when you put that sweater on with those slacks because I was like it's giving I'm too rich to give a fuck about your vibe okay but 
then why can't I just wear whatever I want to wear? You always. totally can. It's just like the Patagonia moment was just <laughs> like, that's different. If we lived in the Bay Area, it would have been okay. I'm from Colorado. That's not the Bay Area. Okay. <laughs> and also Colorado, like whatever. Okay. <laughs> We're past it. But then, so like... I, I, I enjoyed watching the people that I wanted to see at Coachella from the comfort of my own home yeah. with angles right up where I wanted them. And then when it zooms out and you see the crowd, like I took a picture of the crowd and I sent it to Lizzie and I was like, I don't think I'm missing anything. And you have to yeah. walk miles to get even into the facility where you can then walk further right. to a stage to see somebody perform that you're not actually going to see perform. And it screams to me that you have to be blackout drunk. Yeah. So for me, my FOMO is I only want to go if I'm Kylie Jenner and treated as such. <laughs> Like, that's what and I, I think want. I want everyone, the Kylie Jenner Coachella experience. And I think that's what everyone envisions their Coachella experience will be. I honestly thought you could provide me with that experience. <laughs> I don't know. When I was looking at all of them, I was like, wow, they're on a different planet. Like, when you see Kris Jenner's Easter spread, it's like... So much. Mm. Also, I think about how sick those kids must feel after all that candy. Because I had two lemon bars on Sunday, and I was like, oh, she's going to bed. This is too much for I my body. I did black out with sugar yesterday. I felt sick. I had a fucking headache. I had to lay down. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, she blamed her rage on me on sugar. She said, sorry, I'm raging with sugar. Oh, I literally don't remember whatever you're talking about. <laughs> like, I blacked that out. What happened? <laughs> I will say Shane did spoil me. He did Chris Jenner me, so. What did he do? And also, what did I do to you? What did I scream at you? Just rudities. Oh, oh was it about your cooking? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, now we've I already been over this. Now I remember. <laughs> what did he get you chocolate stuffs and he Easter like basket? i got i got home and he had set up like the most a chris jenner spread i posted on my instagram stories like oh shane jenner spoils me so much because it was <laughs> like it is just so funny that he he goes all out so once we're dads it's gonna be so cute because oh. you know he's just gonna deck the halls yeah gonna be chris jenner all yep. over the place. Maybe my kids want to come over for Easter, too. <laughs> Maybe. No, honestly, I would love to set up, like, Easter egg hunts. Mm -hmm. Like, did you do that as a kid where yeah. you, you hide the eggs all over well, the Well, I wanted to do that with Joe and James, but they're like, we're 40. <laughs> and I was just like, fuck you. <laughs> Jelly's been um, eating a lot of eggs, though. <laughs> oh, you're feeding her the hard-boiled eggs? I shouldn't be, but I, she did get a hard-boiled egg. They only live once. They're supposed to have, like, closer to raw eggs. My dad uh, cooks an egg for his dogs every morning. Yeah, I used to, like, Bubs knows eggs in English and Spanish, huevos, <laughs> and gets real excited. Like, he knows, yeah. He can't have either right now because he's on a very strict diet. Poor little guy. Mm -mm. The, <laughs> the vet keeps calling him overweight. I, said, can, <laughs> I hate when they do that. I hate yeah. when the internet does that, too. I say, can we call him Chubbas? <laughs> we went to the vet this week to get him because he's got allergy issues, so we're trying to resolve those. And I was told that he needed to lose four pounds. So he's been on a very strict diet. And we go in and it's like I walk him and he pooped twice. I was like, you're going to be a skinny legend. <laughs> like, you got this, baby. So like the way in comes and I'm like, get ready because this dog snatched. It's about to be a hot boy summer. And the vet comes in and she goes, so he's fatter. <laughs> and I went, shut up. And she said, no. And I was like, are you sure it's not? muscle mass that he's gained and she was like yes and i was like damn well all right do you have to keep writing obese on his paperwork because it's like <laughs> he starting feelings. to affect him negatively <laughs> like i honestly think they understand like yeah if i've ever made a plus size comment towards honey she like looks at me and then like jaunts away yeah i called her a skinny legend this morning in the bathroom she, she liked it i'm telling you yeah. yeah she perked up so now bubs is on a extreme exercise regimen but he keeps like laying down like bitch this is not it for me and what are him and joe doing i see there's something going on there oh so Bubs and Joe both sleep talk. Oh, what a nightmare for you. Yeah, and Jelly snores. So it's like Jelly snores, Joe snores, Bubs is attacking something in his dreams. Oh, yeah. Because he's always like... And then as he kicks his legs, <laughs> the kicks you. Yeah, and sometimes mm -hmm. he goes... Rrr, rrr. Oh. And last night while he was barking like that, like sleep barking, Joe would respond to it. And Joe's sleep talk is like really weird, bland, office -y talk. 
<laughs> like he's like, yeah, we'll circle back to them. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's like the most, it's the weirdest shit. Cause Joe's like worm brains. Like, I don't know why those are his dreams, but they like. You should take advantage and really get whatever information you need from him while no, he's No, that's what I'm talking. saying. Like, it's just like in an office, no information is ever provided. <laughs> <laughs> like, Have you ever tried having a conversation with him? No, but he and Bubs. So Bubs last night would go. <laughs> and then Joe would be like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then just gibberish and then bubs would say something and joe would be like oh. you need to record okay. this for bubs's tiktok yeah i should i thought about gra that's the first time i've actually thought about grabbing my phone but it's like in the moment usually i'm scared because joe's also a sleep screamer as i'm pretty sure we've discussed mm -hmm. so like when it is the benign like oh yeah all right i'll get back to you on that like whatever the fuck it's fu it's weird it's weird and they were both having like an exchange nocturnally i don't know well shane had told me and it freaked me out because we were talking about the multiverse and parallel universes yeah. that, yet you don't want to go see everything everywhere all at once with me i don't know it seems too cool for me you're talking about multiverses right now okay well i don't know what that you liked spencer okay i loved spencer yeah i think you could do another artsy movie okay well i'm free for a while let's go okay let's go i'm rizzy um uh, oh. <laughs> sorry uh wait really yeah i asked you last week for a reason girl no okay yeah uh but so shane told me that he has he has like a dream a recurring dream world like he's been going to the same house in his dream since he was in middle school and as long as he can remember and there's always a storyline he can like it just freaks me out because yeah. I don't have anything of the sort. Like there's no consistency. I don't have another life when I go to bed. And he's saying he has like a whole world mm. that he re-enters when he goes to sleep. I mean, I have reoccurring dreams too, like since I was like four. Well, reoccurring I think is different than like a world in which you live. Yeah. I mean, let me pick my nose about it really quick. <laughs> I, I I wonder I wonder more about that. Like I'd want to talk to Shane more about like what that means for him. Like is he going to his what's that fucking video game you guys play? Animal Crossing. Yeah, is he like is it like an Animal Crossing type of world that he's traveling to or like Well, let's get more information. Yeah, I need that. more information mm -hmm. before I'm like moved by the notion because I have a reoccurring dream that I'm being like attacked by dinosaurs and like it's a San Francisco y landscape and it's like, yeah, it's the same house that I'm hiding in and running away to and all of those things but it's like i don't think it means anything other than that has always terrified me and it's more about the notion of people not believing me right when i'm scared and trying to warn someone of something so like yours is real trauma yeah i've been ha <laughs> <laughs> i've been having like anxiety ridden dreams and i'm not i'm not anxious right now in my real life but yeah. when i go to bed like it's like chaotic it's chaos it's crazy it's embarrassing situations like, like what you know those bright pink pants i got in palm springs yeah. i was i like woke up in uh in an orange theory class in my pink pants oh and what everyone a nightmare was at me. <laughs> and that's one of the this more tame the ones sweetest but I'm boy saying, with no, the purest you mind you imagine? ever gonna meet <laughs> or like can you imagine or he I says was, the trauma oh I your was, trauma is real listen to mine i didn't say mine Pink was pants in an orange no, theory class you bitch. i didn't say mine was trauma i said mine was anxiety ridden for me <laughs> i was starring in a play and i couldn't remember my lines i had like an and actor i still nightmare. won an academy award it was wild <laughs> I just I just started making up lines and hoping the cast could react. I love that. For it was you. awful. Yeah, I'm and, so sorry. <laughs> okay, well, if we want to get to our test today, the test that we had promised, I think we should jump right into Ice Tea, which is our Kardashian review. Okay, that's where we're picking up. Okay, all right. I think you should start. Um, well, you have your Tristan note. I'm just scared because you have this note with multiple exclamation points. <laughs> yeah, I can't forget to read the ads, but we'll do that in a second. Okay, so we saw the Kardashians. Yeah, the Kardashians, like everyone did. <laughs> and we have the same take as everybody else. I don't know if that's true. Well, what are your takes? Are they original? My take is that I, I guess I haven't watched the Kardashians, but like I love the Kardashians. And so picking up into mm. this new season, I think for me, the reality show of their life not as a reality show is much more mysterious, enticing, and intriguing to me. Like watching them all via Instagram and headlines is a lot more intriguing than seeing the reality of it playing out with them just eating their catered fried chicken, mm -hmm. being like, whoa. So, I mean, I kind of disagree with you. I thought, so like that moment, the Tristan moment that you were talking about earlier is when Kim and Saint 
find the the new uh the new alleged sex tape Which footage to me seemed so fake like i think they were trying to recreate the moment and why was it on a kid's game i don't think it's a kid's game i think roblox or whatever is a game that a lot of people play and the kim kardashian sex tape ad pops up everywhere all the time oh okay i um, thought i didn't know i've never heard of roblox but the interesting thing of it that i find funny and that tiktok has not picked up on also is when you see kim go chloe can you take a look at this? Tristan goes. <gasps> <laughs> well, that poor. Like, poor, he's fucking caught. And this is before the second baby well, mama drama and, and dropped. So it's like that motherfucker is harboring so many secrets. And then later in the episode, that piece of shit is like, I just want you back. And it's like, well, where, are you, where do you get off? on doing that i feel the most embarrassed for chloe because she no hold on let me talk okay she feel she is trying so hard to get the audience to forgive him so that she can forgive him and be with him publicly like she's really setting the scene like we're going to therapy and he's just a bad actor like he's not good at it and it's like she's I think she wants the best for her family, which every person would want that. And this is prior to another scandal emerging with him and another woman. But she's just giving it her all to, like, have the audience be like, maybe he isn't the worst. And it's like, oh, to now know the reality, which is, like, he's I mean, the worst. if I were her, I would not be embarrassed because of everything you said before that. It is such an admirable fucking battle to wage through on her part for her kids and for her family to want to with every fiber of her be being believe that this man who she trusted with her love her life her body and her fucking soul outside her body which is Truseldorf I'm saying the situation and he no I know and I'm still and I'm saying I think we need to stop as a society, we need to stop placing embarrassment on people who get cheated on and put it on the fucking cheater who's a piece of shit who the entire world was here to fucking give a second chance to with for this woman who literally went through labor and had a fucking baby with you. You're going to do this to so many people. No, I'm just saying, like, I, don't be embarrassed, Chloe. He should be fucking embarrassed because his actions well, are deplorable. The problem and he's is, a fucking embarrassing bitch. The problem is it causes embarrassment. Like, it doesn't. No, I know. And I'm and, saying I agree with that problem. Social media really builds that up to make and i know she feels it because she is m messed with by the outside world's opinions on her we all know that and it is like i agree with you it's awful and it's horrible but it's just embarrassing that he keeps putting her in this situation like he's allowing this to happen he's allowing to sit down on camera on a reality show knowing what he had done to her and just like trying to yeah so i mean I the stand, situation is embarrassing i stand by he should be embarrassed and she should not be because uh, i don't think i'm saying the situation's embarrassing i'm not saying she needs to be embarrassed right no i'm and i'm saying explicitly she shouldn't be embarrassed because so much of the narrative is oh how embarrassing for chloe if i had a kid with somebody i would try anything and everything yeah. to make it work yeah if I like, if I still had interest in the person, whether that be co-parenting or a loving relationship, I would do what Chloe is doing. Exactly. As well. Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> so Chloe, you fucking hold your head high, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You're hot as shit, bitch. <laughs> Go get him, tiger. Um, I felt very comforted in the fact that Courtney can't keep her grass green either. Like I thought this was just oh, like was her grass. Oh, dead? It, it it wasn't die. It wasn't dead, but it just wasn't like perfectly lusciously green like i envision kim's to be and i just felt mm. like with uh, unlimited did... access to gardeners and landscapers i would just think their grass would be velvety green at all times because i really beat myself up was if my a... grass isn't green because it's a right. it's a labor of love to maintain was green this grass. a plot point of the show or did you just notice her grass isn't very green no this is all me okay and I'm saying it makes me say, feel comforted this. that celebrities of this caliber and this uh, money making machine uh, also have they they have a hard time keeping their grass green, too. Hmm. It just makes me feel good. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a unique take on the premiere of the show. <laughs> that's all that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoy it and I'm going to keep watching it, but I just think like everything that was in this show could have been edited down to 23 minutes and then it would have been maybe a little more like... Hit, bam, boom. Yeah, and I guess maybe the allure is just their setting, which is just like right incredible. And it's just like, they're so rich and you're like, wow. Every meal's catered. Mm -hmm. So like, is that the... 
allure? Um, I think, yeah, it's a little bit like Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, but you get to be like in on it with them um, f- to some degree. I also thought it was fucking hilarious how Kim was like, a girl from Will and Grace talked some shit. <laughs> like to diminish <laughs> Deborah Messing from the grace of Will and Grace to just a girl from. <laughs> was the most savage cut of all. Like, that was the slap I don't even know if world. it was an intentional thing. Like, that's no, how I would have it done it, too, because I wouldn't have... No- I've never seen Will and Grace. You wouldn't have said the girl from Will and Grace? The? Mr. Uh, all of the said it? Well, I've never <laughs> seen the show, so I don't right. know. I'm just saying... You I do don't... know that Deborah Mason is the lead character in it. Um... I, I know. Really? I've never seen Will and Grace. I mean, but you've seen Deborah Messing's face. I know more of the guy because he's like on in the podcast world and he's everywhere. Jack. Wait, what's his name? Well, his name is not actually Jack. I'm forgetting what his actual name is right See, now. See, I can't remember his I name I don't know either. either of those guys' names. Okay. One's name is Will and the other's <sighs> name is Jack. These topics have us fighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live for the Kardashians. I like them a lot. I just thought it could have been cut together a little more snappy, but... That's just my own personal preference. Yeah, I mean, there's also been, like, just recently, this is unrelated to the actual airing of the show, but back to you talking about, like, how their Instagram drama is a little bit more titillating. Apparently, Mason has a secret account that, like, 21,000 people are following that's private. And on his stories, he posts the hottest tea, and it might be very real. Hmm. Like literally last night I was on TikTok and I just saw a bunch of these things where it's like Mason's like, here's every plot line from the show this season. And then he's taking screen grabs of Kylie DMing him saying, Mason, stop. This is not cool. He literally released a, a photo picture of Kylie's baby, her son, with his name revealed as Knight something Webster. Hmm. And all this shit where Kylie's just like, fucking stop. Like I'm in a meeting right now. I can't. Like, this is not cool. This is not cool, Mason. Stop, stop, stop. And he posted <sighs> all of that on the stories. And like some people that follow it are like screen grabbing it and posting it. And he's like, here's every storyline from season one of wow. the new show. Apparently Kendall's engaged and like a bunch of shit's going on in it. Like Kim's helping Pete well, that, with something. That's what I mean is I feel like for the premiere episode on a new network with how much craziness goes on in their worlds, it yeah. could have jumped right to it. Like yeah. that's what I mean is it's underwhelming in the sense that like there's no lack of storyline there. And I, I just and Kendall think being out of focus was like, bizarre. Was out of focus. What the fuck? The Jenner girls just don't give a fuck. They don't give a and fuck. And apparently they're splitting the paycheck equally. And it's like <sighs> good for them. <laughs> who's showing up to do the work? Anyways, <laughs> they're like they're like the cliffhanger at the end of every episode. Like, will they or won't they show up next week? And are they going to utter a syllable? Stay tuned. No, like Kylie showed up, but like she didn't say anything. So the no. shot they got of her was like her playing with her nails at the dinner table, and I'm like. That's what we're paying Kylie for. And I love it. Yeah. I mean, good for them. I think nothing, I wish nothing but success to that family. They've done this show <laughs> Nobody for so many years. Nobody has to wish them success. <laughs> You're right. Frankly. Okay. Um, do you want to hit on your last Khloe Kardashian thing? Yeah. I just think it's fucking wild that Khloe Kardashian admitted to Photoshopping True. Remember that whole scandal? Like, mm-hmm. well, I True. don't, but I've now There was a whole scandal it. where Chicago is pictured at Disneyland with True, but the photos are very clearly Photoshopped images of True. So messy. And it's like, in my heart, I was like, why would they do that? I'm still wondering, why the fuck would they do that? Well, and, to, and fucking... Chloe posted like True's first time at Disney World like today or not today but well, like you know apparently it was Kylie's baby and then at the, the time yeah and they put was, True's face over yeah because the, the everything was going on with Travis and they didn't want backlash about that oh that but after Astro World the, the, the baby prob- went to Disneyland the thing is just then yeah, don't messy. post the photo like yeah, why don't. why Photoshop the it's like is posting a photoshopped image oh, of your so, kids at Disneyland so important that so like Chloe it has had her to sisters be, back and that's what that was i guess so but that's it's like, a pretty selfless act of love why Again, why Chloe's do it stock is just rising for me but why like why not just <laughs> hold the photo like why do you have to post the photo of yeah the children you don't have to post the photo but i do think it's sweet that chloe <laughs> swooped in with the truseldorf save or maybe other people saw them there and kylie wanted like a cover story so for cover fire they're like no that wasn't stormy that was true i love them all honest to god <laughs> <laughs> <Cutting>. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Can we be them? Today's episode is sponsored by DoorDash, who we love so much. I'm not the best chef, so DoorDash comes in handy when I'm a busy working girl and I want lunch to my door while I'm also being efficient while getting work done. So DoorDash is perfect. I can get what I want to eat when I want to eat it right now and to my door with DoorDash. And lucky for all of you, you can too. Along with all the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. You can get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. If you're craving that late night ice cream or if you forgot that one key ingredient to dinner or maybe you just need to stock up for the week with DoorDash, get everything in one app. They have over 300,000 partners and you can support your neighborhood go-tos or you can choose from your national favorite chains like Popeyes, Chipotle, and even Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items can be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code SIP. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code SIP. Don't forget that's code SIP for 25% off anything you order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Today's episode is also supported by Upstart, and I know it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel when you have high interest debt, and sometimes it can even be harder to ask for help, and that's where Upstart comes in. In. Upstart powered personal loans can help you pay down high interest loans all online with simple and easy to understand payment terms. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million customers on their path to financial freedom, whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, refinancing your car, or funding personal expenses. Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows that you're more than just a credit score, so rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model can considers other factors like your income, employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rates in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000 without impacting your credit score, and you can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. So don't wait and check your rate today at upstart.com slash the SIP. That's upstart.com slash the SIP to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash the SIP. One day two, Marcus. <laughs> I felt like deleting them from my phone. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry. All right. Are you alive, Chris? Yes. Hello. Are you, <laughs> Are you well? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have a good Easter? Did you have a good week off? I had a wonderful Easter. I did, I, I did not have a week off. But right. <laughs> but yes, I'm sorry. Oh no, it's okay. All right. Well, we just wanted to say hi. Okay. I appreciate you. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. So we wanted to before before we get into our. <laughs> well, do you have literally this? like they're starting to sound more and more like we're like holding Chris oh, no. hostage. Someone's like let the let the audience know you're not being tickled behind camera, Chris. Well, I want to know. I, they were concerned for him last week, so I just wanted him to be able to say something, but he had nothing to say. Do you have any stories for us, Chris? Not Did you really. get crumble cookies this week? No, I'm sad about it. Crumble, how about crumble discontinuing our fave? <gasps> Dude, we should talk about that. What the fuck, crumble? The classic pink chilled sugar, sugar cookie. Like, was that an April Fool's joke that we just saw too late? I don't know. Because we are pretty out of the... They've lost Did you a... call the number? No. There's wait, a number. There's a, like, hotline? There's, like, a grief number call the they number. set up. No, call they the did not. Call the number on air right and now. And in the back kind of place, in the arms Shut up. Oh, uh, we're not trying to get copywritten. We oh. can't call them. Oh. So, but why would they do that? Why would they discontinue that? Like, they've lost and then a customer. They just, and then they fuck with our emotions saying we can call and, like, place a... Yeah, complain that's and then up. they just play in the arms of the angels you know i, I feel uh, slighted i've promoted them so much yeah eat a fucking dick crumble your cookies eat a dick. suck C- yeah Blech. whatever Blech. i'm actually devastated about it honestly i ate a crumble cookie one time and had a bad day <laughs> so i don't know if the two are related but i do know that both happened at the same time and if you just so happen to bring back your chilled pink sugar cookie without tormenting us for too long like yeah. if you make the choice this week <laughs> we'll take everything we just said get back. rid of that chocolate chip cookie nobody yeah. wants that fucking chocolate grandma's rest get the fuck out of here how with about that their cookie? chocolate chips they need a revision on their yeah. chocolate chips they fucking suck figure that out instead of getting rid of the sugar cookie you sick fucks all right today we're doing therapy with the stars because for some reason lizzie did back to back to back stories that all had 
had to do with uh, celebrities going to therapy oh, and talking I? about it. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do this quickly because we got to jump into Are We the Narcissist? Right, test. right, 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 right. But uh, first up, Nick and Vanessa Lachey uh, said they used to go through each other's phones, but therapy helped them stop. If the therapist said, if y'all are going through each other's phones, then you shouldn't be together. Thoughts? Um, I agree with that. I can't, like, I don't know what kind of previous trauma. I'm I'm guessing that it comes from having a previous relationship gone bad where somebody had cheated on you and you feel so compelled to do that. But I think if like, A, if you got caught going through your significant other's phone, that like if I caught Shane like behind my back looking through my phone, I would think he's lost trust in me, which would then start a divide in our relationship. Um, I agree with that and i also feel like there can be i like like i've gone through joe's phone aggressively and he's gone through my phone aggressively and i don't like when i was looking through it i was looking for through it for evidence of a proposal like that was that which is not cool but it's like i'm also gonna look for presents around the house all the fucking time that's me that's who i am you know what i mean but it's also like i'm never living my life on my phone or in real life doing shit that makes me, that I feel like I have to keep from him. And if you are, then you're probably not in a place in your life to be in a long-term relationship exactly. like that. And yeah. I, I, so yes, I think if you're looking through your partner's phone, it's a, it should be a wake up call that it's probably not the right relationship yeah. or you're not ready to be settled down. Yeah, I, even if you're not finding anything in the person's phone, ask yourself why you're looking. And then and Ka- resolve that issue. Kaylee Cuoco, flight attendant, comes back this week. I'm yay, so yay. excited. Um, I did not see that going to a season two. It felt like a miniseries. Continue. Really? Oh, yeah. I loved it. Oh, I loved it too. But I didn't. Fe- I felt like there was a story that had been told. Right. We'll see where they go this season. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco admits that she's in therapy to forgive herself for her mistakes. You added this. I don't know where it's really going. Oh, I think uh, you know life is long, and nobody has a clean slate. Failure is going to happen. You are going to fail yourself. You're going to feel as though you failed other people's. You're going to fail at reaching goals. And you cannot allow that to be something that stops you in your track. Because as I said, life is long. And those are learning opportunities. And we're not our worst moments. And no. when something does go wrong or you do make a mistake, those are, like you said, the most pivotal points to be able to look back on and make a change. Like yes. sometimes it takes doing something out of the norm or that isn't right to be able to make a correction. Yeah, it takes an electric shock sometimes to realize like, oh, that wasn't the right choice. She's also, I forget what magazine it is she's covering, but she, in the story, this is, she just got divorced for the second time this past year and she was like i'm never getting married again and you can put that on the cover (laughs) i'm sure she had good prenups because she's got a lot of money to protect that big bank but um so i'm sure she had good prenups it's probably just the whole division of everything and the, the legal terms and she's probably just like if i'm in love with you we can just happily be in love yeah i think so much of marriage gets contrived and contorted by the legal system and the government contract making a contract about Mm -hmm. it i think that there can be spiritual and soulful contracts in place that are more valuable than that of the government well in marriage i mean getting married is a contract yeah you know and i think that's set in place because you do get through maybe moments of your life with your partner that maybe you wouldn't if you weren't married yeah so i think to some degree like marriage does help in that regard but it's also like you said could be toxic I, I'm not talking about like not being married. I For me, marriage is identified and symbolized. The contract for me was signed when I put the ring on my finger. Mm-hmm. And so like all jokes, I'm, oh, sorry, all jokes sometimes like, do I want to win this fight and give my ring back? <laughs> or do I want to keep this beautiful fucking heirloom on this beautiful fucking finger? And the answer is, I want to keep this fucking ring on this fucking finger. And that's what I mean. Sometimes, so we're going to figure it out. Sometimes you'd have a fight, no matter what it may be yeah. about, that like... Ha- had you not had that ring on your finger, you might run out and yeah. who knows where you'd end I up. might go stay at Rylands for the night. You never know. <laughs> um, and then finally, Viola Davis uh, is saying forgiveness is not just for the person apologizing or not apologizing. And I guess this is speaking on her choosing to forgive her dad uh, after years of abuse as a child. Yeah. And I think that I added the part. It's not just for the person apologizing or not apologizing. Oh, so that's Lizzie. Yeah. So it's like forgiveness isn't just for the person that's asking for it because sometimes they're never asking for it. 
But for me, because I've been in some instances where I have been um, an unequal participant in an abusive situation. And, and when I say that, I mean my only involvement in the situation was that I was there and that I stayed for it too long. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's really easy to be overwhelmed with resentment and anger towards mm. an abuser to the point that it consumes your life. And even when you're out of the situation, you are still controlled by that person by harboring your resentment. Oh. So for me, forgiveness means I'm going to forgive myself for staying too long and I'm going to move on from the scenario and rem- and remove that resentment from my life so that I no longer have to carry that burden as I walk forward. Yeah, even when I was getting sued by the company that I left before I was doing YouTube on my own, it was so traumatic for me. At that time, I didn't have money to uh, like be to get sued Mm -hmm. and handle the legal fees. And I carried so much anger for so long because they not only robbed me from a lot of money, but it was just so traumatic. And I realized like holding that anger, it was doing nothing for me. And as soon as I like released the anger and released like the negative connotation in my brain of what that meant, I felt free. Like I like the burden was gone and I was able to just move forward with my life. And I think like for a lot of things, like I can't speak on Viola's relationship with her dad yeah. but I think with a lot of relationships like if it's a if it's a family member it is almost in some scenarios if you want to have them in your life or if you want to be of peace with someone and they're not harming you actively now you almost have to like start a new relationship yeah. with them like new okay, boundaries new understandings yes let's come together and build a relationship as day one to move forward yeah and heal yeah yeah exactly i uh like treat yourself as the person who deserves how you want to be treated right not as anything less than that ever sorry my phone's blowing up (laughs) (laughs) putting it on work mode and with all of that uh we will take well well, we've got to be on your phone right now transitioning to something more (laughs) (laughs) self-centered We- so Ryland think at Ryland and a lot of people think that it's a problem that I self-identify as the narcissist. Well, the, more that you like will take pride in saying that you're it's a narcissist n- because and he, here's the thing, like uh, uh, narc like if you are a narcissist, it was built upon traumas and behaviors so it is like uh it's sad that it has a negative connotation because it's based and rooted upon traumatic events Mm -hmm. but some of the coping mechanisms or the narcissistic personality traits that develop in spite of those or despite of those are very negative so sometimes when you're like well i'm a narcissist so whatever right like it's almost just like well i don't know if you are a narcissist i think that you know just like anything there's a spectrum and arrange for narcissism I think the fact that I can relate time other people's life events to myself all like a hundred percent of the time that's pretty narcissistic well, I think a lot of people have narcissistic characteristics or person yeah. or traits narcissistic traits yeah and I think that like you've said before my awareness of it is a checks and balance system And I work very hard to not allow my narcissism to hurt or placate other people. And I will say that as a person who's like hedonistically self-serving, it does not serve myself for those I love and interact with to be in pain or discomfort. So you're a self, if you are, you're self-actualized or self-realized as they would say. Yeah, but I also don't think that it's in my, like it's not part of my desire for other people to suffer. Well, like I don't get off on other people's pain. I get off on other people's joy and excitement and pleasure. So that's something that I I actively seek out. Like I heard Dr. Drew and we're taking Dr. Drew's are you an or how narcissistic are you test? But he was saying there's a difference between like jealousy and, and or like, I think it was jealousy and envy and jealousy is like, oh, I'm jealous of this person. Envy is, oh, I'm jealous of that person, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out of my way to take that person down. Yeah. And those are like, very distinct differences and that could also be like the difference between like narcissistic and sociopathism i i don't know i'm also not a therapist so let's just take this quiz and see where it leads us 
and nothing we say is a professional take don't take medical or therapy don't take advice any from fucking us. advice from us jesus christ we okay. don't even know how chickens are born no oh my gosh how embarrassing for us uh so the first question is i have a natural talent for influencing people or i so it's i have a natural talent for influencing people or i am not good at influencing people we're influencers we influence society every fucking wednesday we show up and we tell you motherfuckers i don't know because like i don't think i'm ever projecting we have a segment called advice though okay (laughs) money doesn't become oh modesty doesn't become me i am essentially a modest person i don't think i get it Modesty I don't doesn't think become we're me. Intelligent enough for this quiz. I am essentially. I don't think I get it. Modesty doesn't become me. It's like you're you're not down with modesty. You're like my dick is big and that's okay. Or I am essentially a modest person. Like I may be packing a huge dick, but I don't need you to know it. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like we're kind of in the middle of this. Like I would say I'm essentially a modest person. It's very few things that I'm like so proud about that I'm going to scream at the rooftops about. And how do I not had I not have a platform like a podcast where like, yeah, it is driven off of stories from our personal lives. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I would say for me, modesty doesn't become me, but I'm also very self-deprecating. So I don't know what to do. You have to make a choice. What would you say about me? I go on press tours. You would say I'm not very modest. I just don't get how it's phrased, but I think I'm just stupid. Do you think I'm modest? Yes or no? Um, See what I mean? It's kind of hard because like I I think if you were a like I think if you were Jennifer Lawrence, you wouldn't be modest. Really? Like I think if you were an A-list movie star, you wouldn't be modest. No, I think I'd be more modest if I was an A-list movie star because I'd be like, (laughs) it speaks for itself, bitch. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I think that alone says I'm not modest. Okay. Okay. Modesty doesn't become her. <laughs> okay. I would do almost anything on a dare. I tend to be fair, a fairly cautious person. I'm going to say fairly cautious. I'm fairly cautious. There's not many. Th- like, you couldn't pay me to be a jackass. I mean, I wouldn't even smell the century egg. Okay. You read the next. When people commit uh, compliment me, I sometimes get embarrassed. I know that I am good because everybody keeps telling me so. I get embarrassed. Yeah, me too. The thought of ruling the world frightens the hell out of me. If I ruled the world, it would be a better place. Honestly, it's not a lie when I say it would be a better place. There's no, uh, no, it frightens the hell out of me. There's no no world in which. It frightens the hell out of me, but also I want what's best for everybody. And it's not a selfish choice. It's with a heavy head that I wear the crown. Are you taking this quiz too? Okay, good. Uh, that's he's talking to Chris yes I can usually talk my way out of anything I try to accept the consequences of my behavior okay so here's what like this is another double-sided coin for me because like I can talk my way out of most things and I'm a person who's like I'll take a consequence in what scenarios well I mean I'm talking about like I can usually talk my way out of anything like I never got a single ticket or charge pressed against me and I've spent the night in jail multiple times right and I think if somebody's where I'm at right now, if somebody's telling me something has affected them or if I've done something wrong, I really try to take it in. I'm going to say I can accept a consequence. <laughs> you just explained how you're the all. But I also pay my taxes, okay, okay. which feels like a consequence of living. <laughs> <laughs> okay be honest be brutally honest i am being brutally honest okay. like i can talk my way out of anything and i can accept a consequence i fucking walked around la for fucking nine months because i didn't have a driver's license okay i prefer to blend in with the crowd i like to be the center of attention um p- potentially shocking i prefer to blend into the crowd i don't like personal like that's why i don't want to have a wedding like yeah. the attention sounds hellish to me i have severe social anxiety and again you're not going to believe me but i prefer to blend into the crowd as well okay um, I will be a success. I am not too much concerned about success. I mean, I do want to be a success. Like, and in whatever regard that means successful is to me. Like, I want to have a successful family. I do want to pr- successfully provide for my family, you know? Yeah. So. I am no better or worse than most people. I think I'm a special person. I do think I am a special person. See, I think I'm pretty average with a good work ethic. I agree with that. For myself. No, I think you think you're a special person. No, 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 no. You have to put I'm a special person. (laughs) Because you think I'm special? I will not accept otherwise. Do you think I'm special? It's weird because this quiz also, it almost tells you like you're bad. No, I just While you're inserting it, it puts yellow when you're bad. (laughs) (laughs) But like honestly on air, for everyone and God to hear, do you think I'm a special person? I do. (gasps) Do you mean that? 
Yeah, I do. So cut to me being like, get the lie detector test in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if I would make a good leader. I see myself as a good leader. I'm definitely not sure if I see myself as a good leader. I would say you're a good leader because Chris and I are here right now. No, when Chris Monday. first started working with me, I'd have breakdowns all the time, even just because like I didn't like the camera angle. And then I'd be like, I'm so sorry if I told you I didn't like the camera angle. And the yet right we way. still showed up. But I'm saying like, I don't like, I don't want to take that. I never want to be like, in more of a leader position than I am now, you know? No, but we love, don't do that. <laughs> but we love working with you. Uh, but and that's I think different, that that's a uh, good leadership quality. But I don't, but that's not like a personality trait I'm taking on as myself. Like I don't, I don't I'm not leading anyone, you know? Okay. What are you saying? I'm a, I see myself as a good leader. I And I would agree with that. I think you are a good leader. But it's only because I won't ask anybody to do something I wouldn't do myself. Yes, but you're also very proactive. Like you'll just like, Yes, I think you're a good leader. Um, I'm assertive. I wish... Honestly, there's nothing fucking wrong with the shit that I have se selected that is yellow. I don't think so either. And I, I would say I am assertive. I'm very confused by the yellow and blue. I don't think... I just think the top one's blue, the bottom's yellow. Uh, I don't think it has a negative connotation. I am assertive. I'm assertive too. Um, I like to have authority over people. I don't mind following others. I do not mind following orders. M me either. Honestly, more often than not, I would much prefer to follow somebody else's orders. It's a lot less. I'm, well, <laughs> I'm thinking. Of, I'm only thinking of it in like the YouTube sense. Like, I wouldn't like to have a boss being like, "You need to make this video." But oh, is that no? Well, I'm thinking of it like I either want to be doing my dream job. But I don't want to be doing like if I'm doing another job, I don't want to be the boss of it. Right. You know, that's what I mean? how I'm thinking of it, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. OK. Like, I've never run for office. I, I do what I'm told. And I've never run for office because I don't want to change the orders that have been relayed to me as a citizen. Right. I find it easy to manipulate people. I don't like it when I find myself manipulating people. I would say I don't like it. When I don't I find like myself. it either. OK. I insist upon the respect that is due to me. I usually get the respect I deserve. I would say... I would say I usually get the respect I deserve because I personally believe that if you're not getting the respect... if you, I, I believe if you have to insist upon respect, you are not getting it. <laughs> and I also feel like if you're... If you, if you really do respect yourself, you wouldn't let people treat you in a way that is disrespectful. Yeah, I mean, and it's not like you need to tell someone not to disrespect you. You just don't fuck with that person. And that's what I mean. So I also yeah. am, I'm also saying I usually get the respect I deserve. Yeah. Um, I don't particularly like to show off my body or I like to show off my body. I don't really like to show off my body. Me either. I don't have muscles to phone home about. Mine's a secret, but I do have great boobs. <laughs> <laughs> um i can read people like a book people are sometimes hard to understand people are sometimes hard to understand for me like and it's the like sometimes when people are just upset and i'm yeah i think i can read people like a book sometimes but you're a little hard for me to read really yeah interesting like just now when you thought I was attacking you over the Kardashians, <laughs> I didn't think that you, I thought I was very clearly not attacking you. Well, you were just such <laughs> in like a state of, uh, oh, I'm angry at Tristan Thompson anger for in defense of Chloe that I felt like it was directed towards me when I don't disagree with your standpoint. Right. I just felt like you were attacking. I thought you were saying, I was saying Chloe should be embarrassed. No. And I'm like, no, but he's putting her embarrassing situations, which invokes the feeling of embarrassment to me yeah and that's why i think it's being projected onto her yeah and i agree with that and okay. at the same time i'm saying like fuck that and i understand that as well exactly okay do you want to read the next one 17 if i feel competent i'm willing to take responsibility for making decisions yes if i take i like to take responsibility for making decisions i would say if i feel competent i am willing to take responsibility i'm not 100 percent always down for decision making. But it says I like to take responsibility for make. Oh no. Yeah. Like I, I like to feel competent before I'm making the call for anyone. Like if someone's mm. like, do we take, it's like what we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Like I don't want to, I don't want to pick the fucking music station. I don't feel no. competent in understanding everybody's musical pick needs the right food now. Choice for a group of 10. Unless it's mm -hmm. Jersey Mike's and everybody's fucking down. <laughs> and if you're not fucking down with Jersey Mike's, get out of the group. Okay. I just want to be reasonably happy. Mm -hmm. I want to amount to something in the eyes of the world. I just want to, be happy don't want to worry I mean, about to things <laughs> i'd be lying if i didn't say like i moved to la to make a career in entertainment which i would think would be the bottom one 
I mean, yes, but I also think so there's like a difference, right? So it's like when you and I talk about success, we're not talking about it the same way that other people would talk about it. We're talking about being good at what we do, right? And getting to do what we love and making a living at it. Yeah, but I mean, it's arguable that like, are we great podcast hosts or is it like a little narcissistic to have a podcast? I think both. I think we're both. And that's why I'm confused with this one because I do want to be reasonably happy at this state in my life, but I would be lying a little bit if I didn't say all of my 20s were in search of becoming oh, a little bit of something. I think everybody's 20s are focused on becoming a little bit of something but I also believe that I don't think validation is something that you I don't think you do the podcast for validation no so that's that's what I think the difference is okay then I'll do I yeah because you're right like I I yes because you can amount to something in the eyes of the world and not be happy and I don't think that's what you want no I would rather be happy than be the most popular youtuber on the platform yeah yeah okay my body is nothing special. I like to look at my body. I like to look at my body. I mean... I'm done with this bullshit where I pretend like I hate myself. I mean, I, I work out a lot of times. I'm not like, oh, I want to show off my body, but I don't yeah. not want... Do I look like a Victoria's Secret angel? No. Is my body fucking everything? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll say this I This like bitch has gotten me body. through almost 32 years of life. I like to fucking look at her and I like to say, listen, bitch. Okay. You strong as fuck, boo. I, I look at that butt. I try... Back it up. I try not to be a show off. I will usually show off when I get the chance. <laughs> well, I guess that this is difficult for us to follow up my last little self model. <laughs> but it's like, is it showing off if I'm just looking at my own ass in the mirror? I try not to be a show off. I will usually show off when I get the chance. I feel like social media has made everyone a show off. Right. But like, do we really post? Oh, the last thing I posted, I think, was about my cute hair. <clears throat> I mean, I'm going to say I usually show off when I get the chance because I think everyone does on social media. Like, I think if you have a social media account, you you show off the the highlights of your life. Like, nobody's, yeah. you know. Okay. I always know what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm not sure of what I'm doing. Oh, I'm not sure of what I'm doing Sometimes a lot. I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I depend on people to get things done. I rarely depend on anyone to get things done. I, I depend on people sometimes. Well, often. I'm not like a super independent worker. Like I like to have like, like I couldn't do a podcast alone. There's no way in hell. Even with my videos, like I like Shane to like watch through it once to get a second opinion on like, oh, that should be well, cut. I don't know if getting a second opinion is something that you depend on. Would I you mean, not post if you didn't have a second opinion? No, I still would, but I'm still going to stand by I depend on other people. I'm going to say I rarely depend on anyone else to get things done. I would I'm, say that's true for you. Okay. Sometimes I tell good stories. Everybody, Everybody likes, likes to hear my stories. Why do I have to keep reading the ones that are embarrassing I, for me? I would say sometimes. I only I only hit it out of the park every once in a while. I think everybody likes to hear my stories. And I'm going to eat shit in the comment section for that. No, I don't think so. I think that's why we. a lot of people are like, this podcast is good because of Lizzie. And I think it's because you're a natural born storyteller. Stop. I get a great... <laughs> I expect a great deal from other people. I like to do things for other people. I like to do things for other people and I do expect other people to I know be good. I'm both well this is I think this isn't how you and I are reading it I think when you expect a great deal from other people it's like in return from other people but you and I just expect decentness from other people do you know what I'm saying so we'll say I like to do things for other people yeah I think okay. that's more true than what the other thing means um I will never be satisfied until I get all that I deserve. I take my, I, in my age right now, I take my satisfactions as they come. Like Same. I really try to be grateful every morning when I wake up, I try to like state five things I'm grateful for. Yeah. And also I think I will never be satisfied until I get all that I deserve is nobody deserves anything. That's an entitled ass fucking notion. Literally nobody deserves a single thing and life isn't fair. So compliments embarrass me. I like to be complimented. Compliments embarrass me. Yeah. I mean, it's not that I don't like them, but it's like, I don't know how to like... I don't know how to like, roll with you it. You just I'm say like, thanks. No, I have skin cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a strong uh, will to power. Power for its own sake doesn't interest me. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't want to be an authority of many other people. I mean, I psychotically have a strong will to power. Okay. But like you said earlier, like, I think that is a trait that I've uh, evolved to because of being... A small child with not a lot of power and a lot of upsetting situations. Right. Um, okay. I don't care about new fads and fashions. I like. I don't care about new. Fads. I don't care. 
Um, I like to look at myself in the mirror. I'm not particularly interested in looking at myself in the mirror. I like to look in the mirror. Mm, I avoid mirrors like when I'm walking. I don't avoid them, but it's not like I'm stopping to look at it. You're so beautiful. I, I'm not saying I don't think I am. No, I know, but I'm just saying, and this is you being bad taking a compliment, but like you are a handsome like, man. I don't like to discover I have a new zit that I didn't see before. That's none of your business. Yeah. Um, okay. I like to be the center of attention. It makes me uncomfortable to be. Th- We've already Are these answered repeats? that. There's only nine more questions, you guys. I can live my life in a, any way I want to. People can't always live uh, their lives in the terms they want to. I'm going to say people can't always live their lives in the terms they want to. But why is it I can and then people can't? Because I do feel like. What? I mean, well, I'm just thinking about like if I can't afford a Jersey Mike sandwich, I can't afford a Jersey Mike sandwich. And my, my the terms of life that I want are Jersey Mike sandwiches. So but I just think it's weird because one's I can and the other one's people can't. Maybe that's the test of it. Are you singularly focused on yourself? Or do you understand that not everybody, including yourself, can live? All right. I don't know. Um, being an authority doesn't mean that much to me. People always seem to recognize uh, my authority. Being doesn't, it doesn't mean not, much yeah. to me. I would prefer to be a leader. It makes a little difference to me whether I'm a leader or not. I mean, I... It depends on the situation. Yeah, like I keep thinking about my work. Yeah. And I guess I do prefer to be a leader in my work because if I wasn't, then what would it be? Like, you know? I mean, I think... For me, like there are, again, there are instances when I like to be led and instances where I like to lead. Okay, so what are you doing? I'm going to say little difference because it's situational for me. Okay, then I will too. I am going to be a great person. I hope to be successful. I mean, I'm going to be a great person because mm-hmm. I think great people are successful. You know, I think that's... And I'd rather be a good person than a bad person. Well, you can be great and not successful as well, but I think you can be one and this, you can be both. Um, people sometimes believe what I tell them. I can make anybody believe anything I want them to. I think people I, sometimes believe what I tell yeah, them. Yeah, I'm not a great liar, honestly. Lying makes me anxious. I'm a born leader. Leadership is a quality that takes a long time to develop. I think it's both. Um, I think it's a quality that takes a long time to develop. Like, I don't think anyone has the natural instincts to just create a billion dollar company. Then explain why I've been successful straight out the womb. <laughs> explain it okay make it make sense i wish somebody would someday write my biography i don't like people to pry into my life for any reason i don't like people to pry into my life for any reason i mean yeah if i was gonna write a biography i'd want to write it myself and i don't have any um any ounce of me that wants to write anything who wants to read my life story and who wants i wouldn't even want to write like i a book deal sounds like the worst deal for me like i don't want to write a book i'm also like laughing it's like my early my earliest memory was playing in a cupboard in the kitchen riveting stuff (laughs) okay I get upset when people don't notice how I look when I go out in public. I don't mind being uh, blending into the crowd when I go in public. I'm going to admit it. I get upset. Really? I don't. But it's like not real. It's like faux upset, but I am a little bit upset. And I'm the opposite. Like I don't, I want to go to Trader Joe's and just like nobody, I don't, you know, I just want to like get in and get out. And I hate when we're in public and you get recognized, like it makes me anxious But sometimes I will go in public and I'll be like, why is nobody recognizing me? (laughs) I'm in my demographic right now. (laughs) I am more capable than other people. There is a lot I can learn from other people. There's a lot I love. I think like to be successful is to learn from other people. Absolutely. And always you can always learn something from someone else, including a difficult person. Oh, always. Maybe more from a difficult person. Yeah. And also, like, interacting with human beings is the closest you're going to get to God on this earth because each one of us is a child of God. So be fucking nice. All right. I am much like everybody else. I'm an extraordinary person. Oh, I'm extraordinary. I'm sorry. It's I would true. say I'm much like everyone else. Lies. No, I just think I work hard. I really don't think I have anything that somebody Ryland, else doesn't have. You literally have. guessed Cheesecake Factory in that video. <laughs> But that's like also you did something else that was a, like ground breaking um, like you broke the simulation like you fucking predicted some shit. I don't remember what it was, but like recently you did do that. You're an extraordinary person. Fucking hit it or don't. I didn't, but I'm just screenshotting the questions so that I can share them with the podcast. Do I need to screen cross? Crop, cream, I, I think it's fine. Crop, I actually chicken. I should probably screenshot them without. OK, let's go to show me my score. What did you get? OK. 
wait, maximum is 40. Average range for American is 15. But what does that mean? Highest tested celebrity with this is 34. So I think 40 is the highest score. And that means you're the most narcissistic? But the most narcissistic on record is 34. So like 34 is the most narcissistic person on record. So out of 40, I was a six. I gotta go. (laughs) 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 What were you... (laughs) Screenshot your result. What was Chris? (laughs) Chris... Oh, hold on. Let me turn on your mic. I'm red. What were you, Chris? I'm a six. Oh, Oh, wow! Well, I'm a 17. (laughs) (laughs) See, I I think you're fine, Lizzie. I think I'm fine, too. And I don't like this test making me feel bad for the fact that I'm a 17. I think that makes me great. Well, I don't... Like... Say you have narcissistic traits, which I know you do. Yeah. But I feel very safe with you because I think that you're so self-actualized and you're always trying to make yourself a better person. And even though, like, even when you're in, like, your throes of, like, doing self-centered things, you don't expect a response or a reaction, right? Like, even if you, like, send me 30 texts about you, you're fine if I don't reply for 10 hours. Yeah. Or ever. Right. Because oftentimes I forget what I've said, but your your score for authority is medium. Your score for self-sufficiency is low, which seems like a lie to me. (laughs) Your score for superiority is medium. I'll take it. Your score for exhibitionism is medium, which I think is weird because I don't agree with that. Hmm. I barely release the short films I make. Do you know what I mean? Your score for vanity is medium. I agree with that. Your score for entitlement is low. So... Everything on mine is low, except for authority, I'm a medium, and for vanity, I'm a medium, which I agree with both of those things. Um, Self-sufficiency, though, I would have thought maybe would have been a medium. Like, I almost take that as an insult that I'm low on self Me too. And, you know, I I don't, I think having a little bit of, like, I don't think having a medium score means you're an awful person. I think a lot of these traits are, are some things that are very are very good to utilize in your day-to-day life, especially if you want to be efficient. I think a lot of people that run businesses and corporations and companies are probably high functioning narcissists. So like the world needs them too. It's just a little more tricky if they're your significant other and you just have to find, uh, you i mean with every relationship you just have to find like the ways that you exactly you interact and love each other it's like sometimes i do find an issue with my uh uh, authoritativeness or whatever like sometimes i'm like in this moment am i mad because i'm wrong and is it more valuable for me to be right or to get the fuck out of this anger right and it's like oh you know (laughs) It's more valuable for me to get the fuck out of this anger. Yeah. But I do think that my knee jerk reaction is to be, Ugh! but it's like so quickly when I feel that it's like an alarm goes off in my brain. And it's like, wait a minute, bitch, let's unpack this. What is the easiest way through this that doesn't require your, t- your heat raising, your heart throbbing and your voice getting louder. And I think that all comes with age and yeah. you like practicing and not enjoying the res- the results of negative behavior. Right. But then I, I realized that there are some people who like recognize their negative behavior and double down on it because they're not getting the response. And it's like, why don't you try? Well, and any- that's what I mean. It can be very dangerous. Yeah. Like, so, you know. And like when that happens, I'm just like, I'm going to not engage here. All right. Ever again. Well, if you took the test, let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts. We would love that so much. And um, thank you guys for listening to and supporting our show. We love you very much. We'll see you next week. And if you want to follow us on social media, we're at the Sip Official. We're also there personally. Chris is there too at Crispy Station. We never introduced the show. Oh my gosh! It's okay. We hated our introduction. We're it's we're workshopping yeah. things. You know, it was intentional. <laughs> we're, we're, this week we tried none. <laughs> Next week maybe we'll have one, and it might be new. All right, we love you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the, the sip. sip.